Adam. Adam's going to be joining us in just a second, and we will get started. Oh. Hey, Adam, how's it going? Hi. Hi. How's it going today? Hey, Joey. Hi. Uh, where are you? Where are you right now, Adam? And I am just a couple of miles away from you in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Yeah. 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 No, go ahead. What were you going to say about Great Barrington? Ah, great. Nothing. <laughs> Well, yeah, so I'm in my house and you're in your house, but we're not actually in the same house. Uh, we haven't seen each other for like over a week. So we're just kind of at our houses making art, right? That's right. And also like feeding our children and, you know, taking our dogs for walks and stuff. In fact, my dog might at some point during this, this video want to go outside and you might hear her behind me crunching food really loud because she likes to chew really loudly. It's just a sign that she's really happy. So I'm just going to show you my dog real quick. Um, she's over somewhere over there. Where are you, Frida? Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, no. Where are you? Where are you, Lou? Where'd she go? Do you see her yet? Oh, there she is. Okay, that's Frida. I, I was my cat who was right beneath me, but I am not going to mess with my very amateur uh, setup. Which yeah, actually, sure? made use of Fuzz's scratchy post. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So maybe your cat will want to use it at the same time. That's great. <laughs> and um, what else? Uh, and yeah, my my um, my phone is taped to the missing drawer up here. Uh, from my uh, my art drawers, so uh, yeah, you, you use what you got. So um, so, what are we doing today, Adam? What are, what are we going to be talking about? Well, we're going to be talking about making um, tiny books and zines. So, I'll, for example, what I do is I'm an author and illustrator of picture books. So I make books like this. Yeah some of which I write the words and draw the pictures, and this one I just drew the pictures. But these books, you need about two years and uh, a lot of helpers and collaborators, um, art directors and editors. And, um, so there's another way that I make books, and that we make books. And yeah. I'm just gonna get one here. Oh, what do you got? I have a little in the pocket of my hat here. <laughs> So it's so small that you could keep these in the pocket of your hat if you should have oh, yeah. a pocket on your hat. And I don't know why you wouldn't. But... That's pretty small. So, and that's the size of the book here. Oh, hi. So that's pretty small. Okay. Okay. And this is a blank book right now, but I've made the, the cover. Yeah. Just a scrap of paper. It's a piece of paper that I use to, um, I sprayed paint on it. Um, oh, okay. And so I'll use any scrap, um, and it actually makes kind of a nice cover. Oh, so that's like just a real tiny book, is that right? A book, yep. Yeah, that's great. Um, I probably should say here that if you um, have to leave uh, this, this like bookmaking class at any time, want to uh, check up on us later, um, you can go to stimolalive.com and... Um, my camera is backwards, so I had to write this backwards in order to make it look forwards to you, which is actually how our eye works anyway. It's very confusing. So this is how it really looks to my eye, but we're doing it this way so you can read it. Okay, so uh, if you want to go to stimolalive.com uh, sometime after this, you'll be able to watch this, and it'll also be on my story, uh, Lucky Cloud, and Adam and I will be on there for at least 24 hours, and then for much longer uh, at the Stimola Art Studio. So thanks for having us, Stimola uh, uh, Art Studio. We really appreciate it. Uh, okay, should we get started making some, some other kind of tiny books? Let's do it. All right, so um, we're going to be making uh, one of my favorite kind of instant books, and I've always used the shorthand of just calling it a zine. And I actually have a book here called What You Mean, What's a Zine? And this is by Mark Todd and Esther Pearl Watson. Um, and it's a really good question. What's a zine? Zine is short for magazine. And a zine typically is something that is um, self-published and is like a smaller uh, uh, book that you make at home. So there are 
um, novels and short stories that are zines. There's purely artistic zines. Um, and a lot of zines are like this one that uh, uh, Merrick Bennett made. Uh, they're comics. So it's just a small way to make uh, um, your own books, uh, often without a literary agent or without um, needing to go and have it um, mass produced somewhere else. Um, most of these types of zines can be made um, at your house if you have a, a, a home copier or um, at, a, at a copy center uh, in a store. Or if you're lucky at like your school's library, maybe they have a copier and you could kind of sneak in there and, and use the copy machine. So um, I have lots of zines I can show you, but I thought we might actually start with the making part of a zine, a very simple zine. That's my absolute favorite kind. And um, that's just an instant zine. So I'm going to give everybody who's here a chance to get a piece of paper. Adam, you got one? Follow along with everyone else. And work All right, on cool, man. Yeah, that's good. Tell me if I'm going too fast. And you're going to take just a plain piece of paper like this, and you're going to fold it in half. And I have to say, the best way to do that is to put it on the table. So I'm not going to fold it up here. I'm going to fold it down here. And you can fold it in half two different ways. It doesn't matter, because you're going to do it the other way afterward. So here we go. We're going to fold it in half hot dog first. OK, so I'm going to bring one edge up to the other. And then I'm going to crease. And I'm just using my fingers. If I wanted to be a real fancy pants, I could use this bone folder that I've had forever and has a bunch of glue stuck to it to, to burnish my, my fold. But you don't have to. You can just use your finger. But then you want to open it up. So that was my hot dog fold. And so now I've got, I've kind of taken that one box and turned it into two boxes. I'm going to set it down again. For those of you who are origami folders, it's in a valley fold, right? And I'm going to fold it in half the other way, taco. Okay. Hot dog taco. Hot dog then taco. I don't want to confuse you, but you could also do taco then hot dog. Doesn't matter because when you open it up, you should have four boxes and all in valley fold. Does that make sense? Cool, cool, cool. All right. I'm taking it slow just so everybody can catch up. If we're going too fast, remember you'll be able to rewatch this video later. Okay. We're going to flip this over so we have two mountain tops. Okay, I've got like a ridge line here and a ridge line here. You see that? Now I'm going to take the shorter end. See how there's a short end and a long, long end of my paper? I'm going to take my short end and I'm going to fold it into the middle of the page right up to that mountaintop there. And I'm going to crease again. Okay? Like that. Make sense? All right. And then I'm going to take, so now it looks like this. If I turn it on its side, it looks like this. Okay, and then I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to fold it up to the mountaintop too. It sort of looks like this. And if I were to count really quick and look at my paper, I should count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes now. But let's set that down again. Let's kind of wriggle it until it makes a W, okay? Everybody got that W shape like that? All right. I'm going to grab the W by the nose and make it a paper airplane. All right. Let's just do that again. Got a W. Grab the W by the nose. Flip it. Cool beans. All right. Do you have your scissors? Adam, do you have scissors? Okay. I like your little scissors. But since yeah. I'm a professional, no, I'm kidding. I'm going to get my little scissors too. There we go. I've been using these um, child scissors for 10 years now. Are you left-handed? Nope, we're, we're flipped. Oh, I see. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to use these scissors to cut. I'm holding the paper airplane. This is the closed part of the zine. And you can see from where I folded, there's a little line here, a little crease. I'm going to cut right on that crease, okay? And I'm going to stop when I get to the base of the wings of my airplane. So I've cut up to about there. All right, great. And now that this thing is kind of talking, somebody said it looks like really short pants, like SpongeBob Square, Bob, uh, square Pants' is pants. Um, now we're gonna lift that up until it does this. Got it? And now comes a part that's pretty unceremonious. You just kind of squish the thing flat. 
and fold it around until you have a book shape like this. Closed out here and then some pages like this. And you're gonna see that some of your pages are doubled up. That's okay, don't try to cut those free. Even with just the pages that are easy to access, you're gonna still have eight pages, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's an eight page zine, okay? And I just call it a zine, that's just what I call it. Um, but there's something that's really special and cool about this, Adam. Do you know what that is? What is it, Jerry? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna number my pages really quick. I'm just gonna write some numbers down on the pages. So I'm writing a number one here. One. I'm gonna try to write a backwards two. Maybe that's gonna go really bad. A backwards three. Let's see. Yes, it worked. Uh-huh. Uh, a backwards four. Did that work? Yes. A backwards five. Uh, backwards five, That's got it. In itself, yeah. All right. Backwards six. Oh man. Okay. And a backwards seven. And then a frontwards eight, because eights are the same either way. So okay. So ready? I'm opening my book. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You want to see what's really cool about this? Okay, here we go. If I open it up, all the numbers end up on the same side of a piece of paper. And you remember I was talking about the copy machine at home? This is when this is really helpful. Because if I open up the copier, I have a copier next to me, but I'm not going to use it yet. And you put it face down on here, and you hit the copy button, then it's going to make a copy of everything on there. And you can take that copy and you've instantly reproduced your zine from an original and have a copy of your work. So that's really great, okay? So I'm just gonna leave this zine over here for a second and we're gonna just talk about how a zine is kind of like a container that can hold anything that you want, right? So let's see, um, well, a zine can become something that's like three-dimensional like this. So this is just a piece of uh, thicker paper. It's a little um, smaller. And what I did was I illustrated and I cut this up. And when I fold it and make it go a certain way, just like that zine before, it makes this really cool little castle. And I can even open the castle up and see this courtyard that's inside, which is kind of cool. So that's like this little castle zine that I made. But if you look, it's the same eight boxes that we had in this zine. So a zine's just a container for any kind of idea that you have. This is a zine that I made with some students a couple summers ago, and they made um, clay sculptures, and we photographed them, and then we um, took the photographs and we, we um, separated the different body parts and then reconfigured them to make this cool collage zine where there's like, uh, you know, the head of one sculpture from one person and another sculpture from another person and another legs from another person's sculpture. And then they all came together into this cool. Zines could be very collaborative as well. You can make your own zines and you can collaborate with. Yeah, in fact, like you yeah. and I, Adam, we like to make zines together and we'll yeah. just pass the pages back and forth. And like you add the nose and then I'll add the mouth and, and those things. And yeah. Oh, do we have comments yet? Okay, well, if you do, we're gonna to try to answer any questions that you have. So feel free to ask questions, okay? Um, one other thing I wanted to show you about a zine being a container, and then um, I'm gonna show you how to make some smaller ones. Uh, Today is actually my birthday, and my daughter, Rosie, uh, made me this zine for my birthday, because we've been doing zines together forever. So she just took a zine and she pasted to it a bunch of um, watercolor uh, paintings that she made. And she actually, um, uh, she named all of my houseplants for me because I'm, I'm a really big fan of my houseplants. So this is uh, Ronnie over here, so Tillandsia. All right, we won't get specific. This is, uh, this is Randy, rubber plant. This is um, Aphrodite. 
Yeah, yeah, she's really fancy. Uh, Fernando, he's a fern. Bert, he's a, uh, well, no, epiphyllum. Tubbs, he's a pilea. And uh, this is red. He's actually a, a, a hummingbird plant. And uh, this is Bonnie. Bonnie's a strawberry begonia. And she's actually right here. That's Bonnie. So good likeness. Okay. Anyway, um, so a, a zine can be a container for art that you've already made. So once you've made something like this, you can attach art that you've already made to it. All right, Adam, should we talk about some smaller zines now? Sure, let's do that. All right, let's do it. Even tinier. Even tinier. So remember how I said I could put this in the photocopier? Well, there's a shrinking button on your photocopier that I think is totally magic. I remember seeing this, like, putting my zine on a photocopier and, like, it's got like percentage points. So I can hit like 100% and a copy is going to come out. And it's going to be like 100% the same. But if I hit 50%, it would be like all the same pages, but half the size or less or less or less. So let me give you an example, okay? And now we're going to sort of set up a test here. We want to try to find a book that this little baby, see the baby, that this baby could read, okay? So I could shrink my, my zine that's uh, this size down, right? And I could get a, a zine. This was one that my students made that I really love. It's a mini robot coloring book zine. And so each kid drew a different robot. And then we shrunk it down until it was this big, okay? And it's got all these awesome robots in it. Right, and all these kids drew their own robots, and we just kind of fit them in there, right? That's really cool. I love that one. Uh, yeah, so you can do it like that. But we decided, okay, that's our mini zine, right? But it's still way too big for this baby to read. If this book fell on the baby, it'd be bad news, right? So we decided to shrink that even more and make this mini mini zine which is still like pretty big for this baby. And then we decided to shrink it down even more. Let me get this thing out of here. Okay, you ready? Now this feels like, what did, uh, what did Milk Gross say, nice to baby? I think the baby would like this one. There we go. So that little, little tiny one. And that has all the same illustrations. And actually the, all the detail is still in there at this size is hard to see from there as from this mini zine. That's an eight page zine, that book that you're holding up right now, right? Yeah, totally. I can open it up and it's just going to come out to the same eight pages, just like this one was. And I can take it and I can fold it. I can do that little thing and I can put it back into a zine, right? So, and the baby can. What was that? And the baby can read it. And the baby can read it. Okay, so what I want to say to you is I would love to issue you the challenge of making the tiniest zine that you can. And there, I classify them under two types of zines. This, these are all of my smallest illustrated zines. And some of them are really, really small, like tinier than the head of a match. But then these are zines that got so tiny that I actually thought one was a piece of lint and a kid said, Hey, you dropped that zine. And it took me all day. I was working on that. And these are like really, really, really small, maybe even too small for the baby. Cause there's rules about what size books babies can have. That's true. It's true. So you can make your zine from this size all the way down to this size, or you can also make it bigger. Okay. So it's really just taking this fold and doing what you will with it. But I'm gonna issue you the challenge to see if you can make a zine that's tinier than my littlest zine. And you could ask your uh, your parents to send a picture of that over to me, uh, of your zine, okay? All right, is that enough about small zines? All right, you wanna talk about stapler zines, Adam? Sure. All so right. I make these very um, scrappy zines, literally, because I'll just use whatever scraps happen to be around. And also they're just super 
simple to make. I'll just cut up some paper of whatever around it and fold it and staple it together. And um, as Joey mentioned, it's his birthday and he had that beautiful um, plant book that his daughter made. And um, I've also made a little zine today for Joey's birthday. And you did? In, in the stapler style. So. Man, are you serious? This. Oh, man. It says HBJC, happy birthday, Joey Chernella. Oh, cool, cool. And when you open it up, it says marking your birthday. <laughs> and then we have all kinds of markers in there. So I have the, the, um, the flare pen. Yo, I love flare pens. Look at this. This is like all flare pens right here. You see all pens. those X's? The, pos the Posca markers. Really Dude, cool. I got my Poscas right here. It's like, did we, we didn't even plan this. We've got Sharpie. I don't have any Sharpies. But I know you have Sharpies and, and, and a Uniball and a Micron. What's a Micron? And a Micron. I don't have a Micron in front of me, but that's a super fine uh, marker. So these are all markers, which is why it's called Marking yeah. Birthday. Man, I love that. Thank you. And then at the end, it says the end. So it's just a few pages. And all I did was I took um, the cover of this is a little harder than the inside piece of paper. So I had some extra card stuck just lying around like this. Oh, wait. I have some too. And this could be any scrap of paper. So, and I cut it. To the, and and I, I'm not going to give any precise measurements here or anything. I just cut it to the size I want it to be. Okay. So that when I fold it, it's a little book. And okay. that, that's my cover. In this case, on the one I made for Joey, you could see there's kind of a textured, yeah. stained look to the cover. For that, yeah. I used the tea bag. Okay. Uh, I emptied the tea out of a tea bag, and then I took the staple out, emptied the tea out, and I had that nice paper. So I glued that onto the cardstock to make that textured cover. And you do that a lot with your illustrations, right? And I, I do. I use the I use the tea bags in my illustrations. Oh yeah. Uh, has a nice background texture to add space and texture and some interest. So the next thing I would do is I have to have the pages inside and okay, I'm gonna make my cover while you while you make your pages. If this could be what you did. Yeah, this could be any number of pages. So I'm just gonna cut take two sheets of the the regular old copy paper, which is what's inside that book. And I'm gonna make it I'm going to cut it out slightly smaller than the cover so that when I fold it, it fits inside the cover of the book. Okay. And like I said, I'm a bit scrappy about it. So I'm just measuring it up to the book and cutting it with my little... Like that? Okay. I'm going to do that too. A little strip. And then I'll show you what I have to be clear of what I'm doing. I did two pieces of paper at a time, so. Oh, okay. I ended up, but so I ended up with two sheets, slightly smaller than the cover. I fold those in half. Okay, I'm gonna do that too. Oh wait, I'm gonna do it on the table though, because I find that it's hard to fold paper in the air. I'm gonna try it down here. Is that okay? Good though. Okay, cool. And then I'm gonna put that inside the cover. And you can see it's a little unbound book at this point. It's not bound, so we need to bind it. And all I'm gonna to do to bind it is one staple. So if you staple, okay, you could do that yourself. And if you don't, your parents could help you staple it. And I'm gonna take the stapler and staple it. Here's my stapler, and here's my tiny little Scrappy book, and gonna... you have a really nice stapler. I don't feel like my stapler is a stapler. It's a nice old swing line stapler, and um, mine's a swing line too, but it's like, it's like a '90s swing line. Yours is cool, <laughs> it's like a vintage. Okay, I'm gonna so do it. open mm -hmm. and put into the stapler, and I'm putting the staple right into the center of where the book would fold. I'm putting one staple now. I have a bound book. All right. Let's see. And the thing is, you could do that with anything. So if you have scraps lying around, I'll show you what I'm going to probably work on next, which is I, so for example, if you do a bunch of drawing and stuff and you happen to have some of your 
drawings lying around. You're not sure what you want to do with them or if you want to keep it. Okay. So, like, I found this one, which had no particular purpose, this creature. <laughs> and it was just lying there. So, I'm going to do this, this one take here. Take that, and I'm going to. Okay. I'm going to just cut into a rectangular shape the size that I would like my tiny book to be. Is that going to be the cover? And that's going to be the cover of the book. Oh, okay. I'm going to do that too. Me too. Me too. Drawings in a, in a tiny rectangular shape so that I can fold it like I did the cardstock paper on the last one. And so there's the cover of a, a book. And when you open the book, you can see the entire whole drawing. And when the book's closed, you see half the drawing. And that might make a good creature book or a monster book. Yeah. I might turn mine into a, like a plant book. And yours could be a plant book because you, you started with a drawing of a, of a flower or a plant. Maybe I'm going to make it for you because you made me a birthday zine. <laughs> um, so you could use junk mail like this came in the mail recently and has this very shiny gold. So that might Ooh. make it better for a book. Just a credit card um, sales envelope or... This little scrap that says free, and then when you fold it, it just says E. Uh huh. It could be the cover of a book. This is a chocolate wrapper, which might make a nice. Oh, yeah. Chocolate bar wrapper, which might make a nice cover as well. What about like a, um, a wrapper from a stick of gum? Would that work? That would be perfect. Yeah. Okay. Anything you have around. All right. Um, and you could prepare papers too. Like I said, um, like this one, which I took out of my hat earlier, yeah, is paper that was previously sprayed with paint. Um, you could watercolor papers in advance, and then you just, or, and then you have papers around that are already ready to go and beautiful, and or they could be any scraps, or they could be office paper too. And you, um, yeah. So it sounds like you could use just like any any paper you find in the house. That anything you're, that you're allowed to cut up, right? You want to check that in. Allowed to cut up. Paper book. Yeah. And then you could put, put that one staple in. You have a little book, and um, there you have it. Uh, that's awesome. Um, so okay, so just to just to catch up here, we've done like zines, these instant zines that you can photocopy and make any size. Um, all the way down to like tiny, tinier, tiniest, super tiny zine. Okay. Um, and then we just learned how to make like staple books. I have a staple book here that I made when I used to teach something called um, Writer's Workshop with um, a kindergarten class. And it's called Once a Bear. And it's about this time that this bear came and it found our... Um, what are those bird feeders called? Like a Yankee something. Uh, a Yankee feeder or something like that. And the bear took it and it stuck its snout down inside of the um, bear feeder like that. And we were freaking out. And we ran inside and then the bear left. But that's a true story. And for that, I used just this really crumply kind of um, craft paper. Oh, nice. A droll Yankee? Is that what it's called? Thank you, Antelopist. I appreciate that. A droll Yankee. It's a good bird feeder, and bears love them. Um, okay, I thought we could talk about accordion books next. That'd be all right? Great, let's do that. I'm just going to put one staple into this um, this monster book that I showed you earlier to okay. show you from last time here. And... There, so this this I'll fill with the monsters later. Let's do that accordion book. Okay. Um, here's one. I have a lot of accordion books. Oh, this one. Well, I was gonna make a sneeze joke, but that wouldn't be very funny. But this one, this is an accordion book. Wait, Droll Yankee is the name of a record label? I didn't know that. 
I know June Apple. Okay, so here's um, a kind of accordion book that is all one piece of paper. So it's a it's a regular sized piece of paper like this that I folded and cut a bunch of times. And when you put it together, it has this dungeon made out of like a whole page of zeros, right? And you can see some of like the dungeon creatures in there. And they're like, you're caught in like a maze. And there's actually one number three hidden inside the dungeon somewhere. But this whole thing, this I believe is 60, is just a 64 page.